Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, best place for long-term stock investors. Today, we will be talking about the upcoming Betamax IPO, a somewhat politically linked stock, or at least uh, politicians are involved here. Looking forward to sharing you about what we think about the business, what are some of the financials, and some cool stats that you might uh, not know. Disclaimer, we obviously do not own any shares in Betamax. We can't, as of, at least of, as of this recording, uh, own any shares because it has not uh, been listed yet. Also, as usual, none of what we say is for financial advice, uh, purely educational. Please speak to a pro if you want financial advice. Hey guys, before we begin, just to let you know, we have a totally free masterclass just for you to sign up for in the comment section or the description where we will guide you on how you can build a six to seven figure portfolio using the power of stock investing. Go check it out. So Jonathan, uh, the key thing about Betamax is that uh, to cut to the chase, they are linked to Perdua. Yep. And in the past, if you want to ride on Perdua's growth, you either have to invest in UMW or MBM resources, correct? Yes, yes that's now, correct. Now, Perdua is one of the most popular car choices in Malaysia and people associate it with high demand and high growth, um, you, typically by yeah. law, because we have a lot of tariffs on foreign cars. Correct. So as as of in, I think as of in Malaysia, Perdua's market share that they have in the automotive industry locally is about 40%. Yep, exactly. Yeah, exactly. They are the market leader. Exactly. Uh, at the moment. And we were, I was actually some context. So I was also in a uh, Zoom session with the Betamax uh, CEO, uh, COO. Mm. So we would love to share some insights as we move on in this video. Yep. Okay. Uh, this one is basically just to show the ownership rate of Perodua mm. of, of this company. So UMW owns like 38%, MBMR owns like about 20%. So this right. is just a rough step on how to own Perodua. Okay. Yeah. But with Betamax, it is actually directly linked to Perodua. So when you own Betamate, you indirectly kind of own uh, Perodua uh, mm -hmm. and, and you're riding on a Perodua uh, growth. And uh, this is just a few facts if you haven't read the prospectus yet. So they are going to be uh, launching their IPO at a market cap of about 225 million, which is about 50 cents per share. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's founded actually by a Chinese guy. Right. Yes, by the late, uh, he passed away, unfortunately, in 2016. He's Mr. Lin uh, Shi Xin. Okay. In, uh, yeah. So basically, they founded this company way back in 1989, and they only have one factory in huh. Malaysia, and it's in Rawang. Mm. Yeah, very humble beginnings, and still very humble <laughs> to this day. And the interesting fact is that they have 28 relation, uh, 28 years of relationship with yeah. Brodo, and they started to work with them uh, by helping Ben to do those EMS services uh, with Kanchu, Brodo's mm. Kanchu. Yeah. So that's how way back they have been working with uh, Brodo, la. Right. Yeah. Right. And another cool fact is that. If you're working uh, as a production crew in uh, Betamax, your annual salary will be roughly around thirty to 40000 Fair enough. Yep. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, another- so IPO course, basics. IPO yeah. basics. Uh, I think you only want to pay attention is to is the repayment of bank borrowings. So basically right. about 29% of the IPO proceeds will be used to pay yes. off uh, the loans. Uh, why this figure is important because I will show you how's their balance sheet mm. uh, is uh, how's the debt and cash no. like. Now having having yeah. chatted with the with the COO, right, I think we need to include as well in terms of importance the R and D for new product mm. and developments and this R and D office space, which if you add together is about forty percent of the IPO proceeds. Mm. So one of the key things that he kept mentioning was the importance of R and D. And as they move up the value chain in terms of or not not so much the value chain, as they move up in terms of the complexity of the equipments that they're manufacturing, they're an EMS company, hint hint, um they will need to R and D more, right? Yep. And they will need to produce more. So that is a very, very yep. important aspect for the business. Yeah, and another cool fact is that Perodua and Betamax do join do spend money jointly with their R&D expenses. So mm. it's not really heavily on Betamax alone. Uh, alone. Yeah, yep. so it's like uh, together one. Yep. So this is a very rough uh, business model on how they actually explain uh, on their business side. So their supplier, basically they are EMS provider. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you don't know what's EMS, it's electronic manufacturing services. Uh, what they do is that they buy those PCBs and all those good stuff, and then they just uh, merge it together. They either sub-assembly it or box build or 
like they build it. Uh, I forgot what's that. I think it's like um, system system box or something like yep. that. Yeah, okay. I cannot remember in my, on top of my head. But basically, the end product is gonna be your car infotainment. Mm-hmm. So what is car infotainment is basically uh, when driving on the meter, just yep, like yep, a, yep, yep, yep. where you adjust your radio and all. Yep. Right. Yeah, so that's the infotainment side. Volumes, then, uh, yeah, air what, cons, not sure. They do yeah, that yeah, well, correct, yeah. correct. And then there's also mirror switches and all those yep, uh, yep. good stuff. And yeah, and then they just send it back to Perodo. Lah. So this is the image, how, how does it look like visually? Uh, yeah, I don't think I need to explain more. Yep. This is just for you to watch, uh, to look at it. Oh, uh, or, or actually they can just go sit in a Perodo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I believe our audience also maybe. Yeah, yeah. Go grab, also, just go on, a, just call a grab. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yep, 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 correct. Okay, and this is the rough process flow. So from the design phase to the handover uh, phase, right? It actually varies between about uh, I would say one year to even two years, yep. more than two years. Uh, and the full payment that they can receive is actually it takes about at least two months after the right. good is delivered. So this is some cool payment terms and uh, conditions that you can know about uh, them in their yep. prospectus. And then, uh, so this is the team. Yes. Uh, you see like some very interesting, interesting name. name. <laughs> yeah. So there's Encik Mizan Mahade. Yep. Uh, he is the managing director of uh, Betamec. And then there's the executive director. You see, uh, this company is actually founded by a Chinese uh, dude, which is Mr. Yep. I, I cannot remember his Lim, name. Lim. And Mr. Lim. Yeah, yep. yeah. But then why is there like four? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah but because actually they actually bought over the shares from Mr. Mm, Lim himself. Mm. So great, that great. is how they actually got this kind of team. Yeah. Yep. So I, I just want to give some insights also in my uh, chat with uh, Enchit Magat, right, which is the COO. Uh, excellent guy, right? Uh, one thing that I like is that he's not very salesy, right? Mm. He doesn't really share a lot about like how great the company is and all that. He's a very product oriented guy, at least mm. on in my an hour with him. Uh, he's incredibly uh, knowledgeable on the products. He can just mention it off name. He can roughly describe what's uh, looking, what they're going to get yeah. uh, in the next few months or years even. So that I find something uh, very, uh, you know, a standout, right? Mm. Characteristic of Unchip uh, Magat. Yeah. And actually another fun fact is that they do vlog they are factories. Like yeah, there's really like cool. one, like, like there's one. I don't, I don't know Muhammad something. Yeah, yeah, but if you search YouTube right, Betamec, you see like there's like workers mm. logging and showing their factories and all. And also the when the moving out process. Also, I think before they actually went to Rawang, they were in I think in I'm, I'm not sure what location, but it was a small office space before they move out to a big space. Yeah, and then he recorded huh? the whole thing. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. Okay. So another fact is that the ownership of this. Uh, Shareholder Iskandar Holdings. So Iskandar Holding is owned uh, indirectly by uh, Mizan Mahade. Yeah, Jimmy which is uh, Mahade's uh, Tunam son. Yes, right? yes, correct. And then uh, that's actually a very big holding. It's about yeah. 72% after IPO. Yeah. And, the, the, and the public is only able to own about 28%. And there's a moratorium, right? If I remember. Yes, correct. So the moratorium is that uh, the first six months, they have to hold about 72% of this company. But after the moratorium, right, they can actually reduce the stake mm. from 72 to 45%. So that is, that, that is something for you guys something to know. Something for you guys to know. And yeah, there's such risk. Lah, but maybe they won't even sell. Lah, so yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. All right, guys, if you didn't know, we have a one-on-one mentorship program where you can apply for, where we level up your stock investing based on tailor-made solutions. If you're interested, you need to apply. Not of all of you all will get into an interview. It's only 20% of you all will do it and even fewer will get to hop on the program. But if you're confident that you can qualify, you can click on the link and fill in your details in the comment section or the description. Okay, so let's look at their major contributions mm. in terms of their customer, Yeah, right? Of course, you can see 52% per dollar manufacturing, 38% per dollar global, global manufacturing, manufacturing, 6% per dollar sales, and then you got HIL and CPRO, mm. tiny, tiny, tiny guys. Yeah, so essentially... 96% of the revenue contribution is tied heavily tied with Perodoa. Yeah, yeah long to short. Right? Yeah. 
And yeah, this is the major supplier where they get those PCBs. Uh, they are those uh, Jeep. Ah, uh, uh, sorry, not smart tech. Smart tech. You know mm. the the latest MyV version, right? There's like a smart yeah. tech at the right hand side of the compartment. So where they get actually those smart tech, right? It's actually this company which I have highlighted. You see, there's Mtel Cellular Sandia Berhad. This is also listed, right? <laughs> this company. Yes, yes, yes. This is also listed. Right. You can actually Google it. Ah, uh, it's Mtel Berhad. Yeah, you can just check out. Uh, they do supply uh these uh sorry smart techs uh all these machines to uh Betamic. and yeah, this is just a rough cool fact for you guys to know uh, about these suppliers. Yep, yep. Okay, this is a cool cool stat. Uh, I believe nobody shared yet. Yeah. Uh, because you need to spend money in order to get this information, mm-hmm. <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so if you look at the left hand side, right, that's like the sales volume of product cars in Malaysia. So you can see that the movement of uh, the sales volume is actually kind of directly linked to Betamax revenue. Mm. So if let's say Perodot is not making much sales during that year, Betamax also will kind of be affected. Yep. Yeah. But if you look at the, the case of 2019 to 2021, uh, I think Betamax revenue has been stagnant. I mm. mean, it has been quite good. But the Perodot is down. Yeah, correct. Right. So this tells us that maybe the complexity or like yeah. the the items that's needed. The to ASP has it. increased basically. Yeah, the ASP the, has increased. the yeah. volume of the kind of equipments that's in the car may have reduced. Again, this is a speculation, mm. but the ASP has increased. So it has covered up for any loss yes. uh, in volume. Why has the ASP increased? Because things get more complicated, right? Last time my V got no camera, now my V got camera. Yep. Right. Yep. So these are some of the things. So if you've got cameras, you've got all these little things, then obviously, yep. you know, you know, Prodo has to pay better make more money. But mm. of course, at that point in time in 2022, 2021, obviously the car sales have to go down due to COVID. Yes, correct. Okay. So another rough stat on their income statement, you can see that their although revenue is growing, but their gross profit is actually dropping. Yes, so the big reason is because of the raw materials. Mm-hmm. Raw materials have increased a lot. Um, not just them, I think a lot of people in the space and even the global economy, inflation, things like that, yep. that has eaten into their gross profit margins. And one thing very clear here is that the uh, big thing you need to focus on for Betamac is not so much the revenue because we know the revenue is going to move you know, in a very flat, maybe growing a little bit in direction, mm. is actually the cost. Mm. If the cost starts to reduce, then you'll see profits actually go up by quite a bit, especially on the COGS or cost of goods sold portion, uh, which will affect the gross profit uh, margin. So that's something for mm. you guys to look at because if you look at operating margins, not too much, too much difference, difference yeah. not a big difference, right? it's there mm. obviously, but the big one is always in the gross profit margin. Yes. Okay, so initially they are actually a net cash company, mm-hmm. but after 2021, uh, they start to ha- take in more debt because they are kind of expanding their factory yep. uh, yeah, to cater for Perodua's needs. But uh, if you look at the, that's why I highlighted in the IPO proceeds, right? About 10 million of the fund is actually going to pay off debt. So this so, should reduce by half, give or take, slightly uh, under half. Yeah, yeah, actually no, more one than third, half. One third, yep, right, yep, 30, correct. 33 million, right? Yep. 30 million, sorry. Okay, so, so that's about it for the uh, balance sheet. Okay, cash flow. So cash flow wise, I think uh, nothing much to comment on. It's yep. pretty healthy. Yep, yeah, it is. And and I think uh, that's the plus point here. Hmm. Right? Even though revenue sell that are not doing the best, but with the cash flows, right? If you look at the operating cash flows and even sometimes the free cash, cash flow, flows, um, you know, can give some form of confidence. And as a result, dividends, which is uh, usually yep. you can't fake them, right? Yeah. Uh, they are actually quite somewhat consistent. Mm. I wouldn't say the most consistent. And actually, another cool fact is that I think Betamax is going to be like a dividend payer mm. of a company because based on the past track record for the past like 10 years, right? They have been consistently uh, distributing dividends. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, okay. Okay, so uh, working cap. A inventories are in- increasing because I believe it's because of the supply chain mm-hmm, issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, nothing much to comment on the receipt. I think receivables and payables are pretty decent. Right. They are kind of like on track, on right. intact I, in terms of the growth. So I think this shows that it's pretty healthy and it's only like they took them by like one month or less than that mm-hmm. to collect the money. So that's pretty impressive. Of course, the inventory, uh, okay, it, it can be good. Right, where people are stacking up. Correct. Right. But it must have commensurate increase in the uh revenue. Mm, correct. Otherwise it's just sitting there. Yeah. That's why you right. see that their revenue is actually kind of stagnant right now. Mm. 
yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. something to know. Uh, and last bit is the ROIC. So because they are kind of expanding a lot, mm. uh, so that's why you see a drop, a major drop in ROIC, but yep. they are still at 10%, which is still pretty impressive. Very respectable, uh, actually. Mm. Yeah, very respectable, especially if cost starts to go down. Yep. You'll see this is a mid to high teen kind of ROIC, which is actually very high level kind mm -hmm. of company. As far as, you know, this kind of investment it goes, uh, as far as, this sort of investment is, you know. If you're enjoying the video so far, remember to like, comment, subscribe, click on the notification bell so that whenever new videos pop, you'll know it fresh. Okay, just to end this, let's talk a little bit about valuations. Hmm. So we're looking at a very tiny net debt. So yeah. enterprise value largely unaffected. Pre-tax profits of 17 times, uh, sorry, pre-tax profits at 17 million. Mm. which will give us roughly a forward uh, PE. Oh, no, sorry. This is a uh, historical EV, uh, PE, yeah, EV, uh, EV to earnings of 13.3 13 times. times. Let's call it 13 times. Mm. Um, now, really going forward, we, we want to know what's the forward earnings, right? What's the growth rate like? And also anything that can affect the cost. Um, what we hear from the management is that the cost will go down. Mm. So even if revenue doesn't move, yeah, that's actually a great issue team. before. Yeah, this means that profitability will increase, which mm. means maybe their forward PE will be lower than 13 times. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and of course, in this sort of environment, we want to look for more value count stocks because interest rates are rising. So this represents uh, something for you guys to look at as far as better Mac. Now, I also want to add that uh, it is a politically linked stock. So for some of you are not comfortable with certain names there, you know, again, no shame and no harm in avoiding. But at the same time, what you need to take note of as well is to not let that be a bias just because there is a politically linked figure doesn't mean it necessarily, it is necessarily a bad company. Yep. Okay, uh, I think this is our final takeaway. Uh, basically about 70% of their input material, which is their cost of goods sold, uh, those raw materials, right? They are actually imported mm. uh, and they're actually denominated in China, uh, R R Renminbi. Mm. Yeah. So, but then I believe that uh, from the management notes that you actually draw down is actually, they managed to negotiate with the supplier to actually make the currency to be- One third, one, one third, third is in RMB of their cost. Mm -mm. So that's very interesting. Yeah, so about um, two third will be local, is it? Local currency? To, to total will be US dollars. US dollars. Mm. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So actually they mentioned that because RMB is more stable, is it? Yeah, I think we, the RMB and the Malaysian ringgit hasn't really moved a lot. Mm. So that's why. Yep. And uh, if you want to know what roughly is the number that they have to spend, right? Uh, it's about 80 to 90 million in cost of goods. So yeah. And then uh, another fact you need to know is that they rely heavily on Prodoa. I mean, you know that 96% of the revenue is actually contributed by this one company. So this is a, could be a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, it could be risk, could be a growth factor also. And also you need to know that they rely a lot on semi-skilled operators to assemble all those uh, PCBs and all those, uh, basically to uh, sub-assembly all these product into the uh, final product. Right. So semi-skilled operators is very key. If So that's why you need to see like, uh, you can see the salar salary of these workers are actually pretty high mm -hmm. in a sense. Yeah. And the last few bit is dropping ROIC. It's okay because they are expanding their business and the last bit is low revenue growth. Yep. It's kind of anticipated already because uh, it follows Prodoa's uh, car sales. And so, we don't need any more my Vs on the road. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, correct, correct. So, and, but the cool fact is that the infotainment system inside the my V or maybe even other Prodoa's cars will actually become more and more complex, which means even though they don't sell a lot of um, my V or sorry, Prodoa cars, the sales of Betamix may not be affected by the sales volume of the right. cars itself right. because of the number of things that need, they need to assemble and all, all those items that they need to provide for uh, Prodoa. Fair enough, fair yeah. enough. All right, guys, hope you got uh, nicely educated today. Uh, on Betamax, it's upcoming IPO, I believe happening in late October. Yes. Uh, assuming all goes to plan. And if you find this video useful, please share it with your friends and family who might be interested. Follow us on our social media. Come watch some of our other videos and we'll see you in the next one.